How's it going everyone? I'm Moz Deadmeat and today I'd like to introduce you to DDC2. So what is DDC2? DDC2 stands for Discord to DCS Command and Control. It's an interactive semi-automated control system for DCS servers using a Discord channel to control and receive information from your DCS server. It utilizes these technologies. It utilizes the Discord bot API, Node-RED, and PowerShell. So what does it do? Well, for a start, it stops the need to have remote desktop protocol ports open to the internet for people to conduct administrative tasks on your server. It also gives community members the ability to conduct some of these admin tasks, freeing up your server admins to play the game rather than supporting servers. It should also increase your server uptime as well. So next we'll cover some of the commands that DDC2 has currently. The first command is test. What that is, is it's a response mechanism for servers to let you know that uh, they are receiving messages. When you type this command, every server that's listening in on that channel will reply saying that they've acknowledged that message. It's a great way to find out if your DDC2 is currently functioning. The next one is info. Info will describe all your server settings and connection strings and all that sort of stuff for standard users. So your low TAC, TAC view, SRS, settings, passwords, and, and so forth for your server. The next one is status. This gives process information about your DCS and SRS processes, as well as a server load value on RAM and your processor. Then we have report. Report is a detailed uh, set of information read from the actual config files themselves. Things like ports, passwords, are uh, not just for stuff for the general users that is read in info, but also things like your telemetry settings for delay and your telemetry passwords and things like that. The next three commands are pretty self-explanatory. They are stop, start and restart, and they will do those things for your DCS and SRS processes. The next one is reboot. This will reboot the operating system that your DCS and DDC2 is running on. And then there's access. Access will open and close the remote desktop protocol port in the event that you need to get on the server. Now, I've got all these commands set up in this fashion. So my standard members can test servers and get info. My power users can pretty much do 90% of what is needed to run a server from day to day. And my server admins, when the shit hits the fan, these are the guys who can reboot servers and get access to the server and fix stuff. Now you don't have to have these commands in this order. You could have all the commands over there with the server admins, or all the commands in the power users, all the commands in the members. It's really up to you. This is fully customizable. Every single command can be a different group if you wanted to. So there's that customizability as well. So how does it work? Here I'll describe a report from a server so you can get an idea of what the workflow sort of looks like. So we'll say an admin user has requested a report on one of the servers. So he sends the command via Discord. The bot monitoring the channel with the server ID of server one will then check the user has permissions to run that command on that specific server. It'll also check that the command is in the correct format. It'll then notify the user notify the user if it's uh, all good or if his permissions are denied or he sent an invalid request. At that point, Node-RED passes the command off to PowerShell. PowerShell will then run the processing command and grab all of the data out of the server, feed it into a JSON string and then pass that data back to Node-RED. Node-RED will then prepare that data, format it and spit it out to Discord as a message. Okay, so now that you've seen that, uh, let's take a look at uh, how it works in the real world. So here we are on my Discord server, the Man Cave. 
So we've got a few channels here. We've got the server control channel. This is an admin only channel that I only let my power users and my server admins get access to. This is my server log. Only my server admins can get access to that. And then I've got a red force and a blue force channel. Uh, and this is where uh, my group members can jump in and chat as well. So. Let's run some commands to start with. So let's start with a status command. So my server name is DCS dev-01. Put that in. Server will then respond saying, yes, I've received the message. Wait a few seconds. And then it'll actually spit out the status. So here it's saying that the server's server operating system has been on for 19 hours. Current load on the memory is 19%. CPU is 30%. DCS, DCS is reporting OK. This is the version of DCS that's currently on there. How long the DCS process has been running. Process is priority. How much RAM it's using. The ports that are actually listening for that DCS process. We've also got SRS uh, information in terms of is SRS OK. That these, these values are OK, not responding and offline. We also have the version of SRS, same sort of information as SRS, and if there was an update going, it'd also say that there was an update, and there's ticks in terms of how many times the process was ticked over, and how long the process on that update has been running. So now what we'll do is we'll switch over to, let's say, the red team, and we'll run the, an info request on this. Now, info requests are cached report and status information. So it doesn't actually run through PowerShell. It just picks the variables that were last written to memory and puts them into the message and sends it. So one of the other big key things about this is it'll actually tell you when you've requested it, but it'll also tell you how old the data is. So this data here is actually three minutes old. From that, it also shows you what the port are listening so this is actually reading stuff out of the config file what the password would be now because we're on the red team here it's redacting all the blue passwords it's also redacting all the admin information as well even though I'm an administrator it won't actually display that information on the red channel okay so we're back in the admin channel now and what we're going to do is we're going to run an access command. So the access command syntax is access with a space, then the server name, and then the IP address. So let's muck that up on purpose and we'll go access dcs-dev-01 and let's not put in an IP address. So if there's no IP address detected, it'll immediately return saying you haven't put an IP address in. So now we've run that. Let's just copy that and put an IP address in. Let's go 256.10.5. So although it looks like a right IP address, it's actually not a right IP address. So it'll then return saying that's not a valid IP address either. Try again. So let's now give it a proper IP address. We'll put 10.10.10.10 .10 in. So that'll then run that request check the IP address is okay, and then open the port and give us the connection string. You'll also notice that there's an access information will only be in the admin channel. So if you wanna have standard members or power users or anyone to have access to be able to log into your server and run the access command, they need to, be, they need to have access to the, the admin channel. This is done on purpose. We don't wanna have IP addresses and ports and stuff open to the rest of the world and giving it out to everyone. Uh, only the people that need it. So what will then happen is that port will then remain open via PowerShell. It'll count down for 60 seconds. Then after 60 seconds, if it doesn't detect a connection, it'll return a message saying you the port's been closed. Um, if you connect, it'll say you've connected. And then every 60 seconds after you've connected, it'll keep polling until such time as you've disconnected, and then it'll close the port again. So pretty secure, um, reduces the attack vector and the attack window on your RDP ports uh, quite dramatically. So there you can go, there you go, it's saying that uh, I didn't rock up and it's closed the, closed the firewall. So let's head back and finish this off. Okay, so feature set. It's pretty easy to use and most people that uh, play computer games these days know Discord pretty well. 
it's quite secure when it comes to connecting to the server remotely as you can open and close the remote desktop protocol port and when it does open the port it only opens to a single IP address. It's got a detailed logging system both on the server and in Discord so you can track what uh, actions are being done and by who. It's also got server modularity in mind so you can have multiple servers running DDC2 monitoring the one channel utilizing the same bot. It's got a very low overhead, less than 1% one C, one, 1 CPU and about 12 megabytes of RAM when just idling along. When PowerShells run, it goes up to about 50 to 60 megabytes of RAM. As you've seen, it's got a granular command system and completely customizable. You can have everyone be required to be an admin or you can have anyone do anything really. Even for server owners that don't want to have people access things like remote desktop, you can just remove the DCS, sorry, you can remove the Discord group from that from that command and no one will be able to access that command. Uh, it also has, we're also planning to have supplementary application support for TACView. At the moment, the only, the only updates are supported are low tech, SRS and DCS currently, but we'd like to add uh, TACView to that list as well. Okay, so finishing up, these are my contact details. Uh, so I'm on Discord most of the time. That's my Discord server. I have a Twitch, a YouTube, and a Patreon. Uh, I've got a DDC2 Kanban board. So if you would like to have a look at what's coming up or features I've got in, I've also got a GitHub for this, and that's probably where you're going to download this and give it a go. Anyway, guys, thanks very much for watching. This, this uh, video has taken far longer to produce than I thought it was. I have gained a new respect for people producing videos on YouTube. It's just insane how long this sort of stuff takes. But uh, thanks very much for your time and uh, I hope to hear from you shortly.